Okay, so we're going to look at this a little bit. This is the United States. So this is the weekly number of deaths that they expect. So this orange line is the predicted number of deaths. So you can see here that this orange line, we're actually underneath that orange line for the expected number of deaths since April 1st of 2017. Actually, the date that that changed was January 21st, 2017. We went into a below expected number of deaths. It actually peaks in January 6th of 2018, January 13th of 2018, and January 20th of 2018. So we had a, a little bit of a peak there. We go through, so supposedly this virus came into being around January, the first documented case, and we have to ex explain that um, this virus had to have been, if, if if China was actually the culprit, then right here, December 21st, December 28th, you can kind of see here where this goes. Um, so our first death documented case when they went back is January 25th on the West Coast. We're actually way under where we should be for this time of year. We don't actually, we start calling um, everybody to go into their homes and to shelter in place around the first part of March. We're well below that. We change our protocols for people that are coming in with the virus um, around this time as well, that we are now putting people on ventilators right after they come in on six liters of nasal cannula. And you can see these protocols were put in place around the same time. And then what happens when they start doing that around March 28th was the first time that we had a major spike. Um, the next week we had a humongous spike from that. And after that, April 11th, humongous spike from that. And then April 18th is the most current one that they have statistics on right now. This is for the entire United States. So these numbers are not for any specific state, any specific county. This is a countrywide. So what you see here, if I were looking at this and I were somebody that is World Health Organization related, that is worried about the death statistics being so much lower, and I don't know what they were prior to April 1st, 2017, but you can kind of see that we've been under this curve. So we've maintained actually well below this for several years, which would say, if, if you're wanting to population control, people might see that as something that they need to fix I'm just trying to like play devil's advocate here as to why somebody would actually do this on purpose. But the numbers don't go up until we actually change everything. They're not going up when the virus was introduced into the United States um, at all. So this is actually a normal curve. This is actually in January where we typically see January, February and March is where we normally see a little bit of a rise in deaths um, coinciding with the is what you can kind of see here that the normal time for this time period April 20th we're about here April 20th we're about here so you can kind of see the difference just thought that was interesting actually let's let's change the jurisdiction and say Let's go down to uh, Virginia. And <clears throat> this is Virginia's line. So we're closer to what is normal for this time of year. So we actually did have a peak January 11th. Um, we had one March 2nd of 2019. Um, if this had actually been a, a a disease that came in um, from Fort Detrick, 
Um, the lab accident that happened there happened in July. You can kind of see this is pretty normal for this time of year. It didn't actually change. We had a little bit of an uptick January 11th. Another little bit of an uptick February 8th. And then starting March 7th, we had a humongous increase for the total deaths in Virginia. And look at this one, guys. This one is scary. So predicted number of deaths was 2,987, and we had an excess death of that almost 101% increase, um, which is pretty scary. It's going down quite considerably now. So let's go in here to Maryland, which is where the lab is for Fort Detrick. So this is our upticks. So we had, we had a little bit of an issue January 6th, January 13th, which is actually not that big of a deal because it's still right around that curve. So we had this. Now, if this had actually happened in Fort Detrick in July, again, we don't really have an uptick in July. In fact, we actually have a, a low point. July 20th was a little bit higher, but we have... It, very much goes on the curve of what is expected to happen. Um, and for Maryland, we actually don't see as high of an uptick in with this pandemic. It's a little bit higher, but not as high as what we saw in Virginia. Let's go to DC. Again, these are residents. These are not actually people involved in the government and not many people are actually we had we had quite a big spike in January um, they actually haven't seen very much of an uptick they had their first uptick in November December 28th which is right around the same time actually that you had um, deaths in Wuhan so we actually see more of a tick along the lines of um, of when the Wuhan outbreak is, considering what had been going on. And then the biggest uptick for them was April 11th. This is well into um, social distancing, that type of thing. So let's just kind of pull this out to California, assuming that we're looking at um, and we have quite a bit of an uptick here in December, January time period. And then we've had hardly any uptick with this virus. So you're looking at possibly an exposure time period, December 30th of 2017 could have been an actual first exposure or the strain that they that they got hit with was already watered down. So the other port cities would be um, Seattle, Washington. And again, you got your uptick. You had a huge uptick here. So we don't really see any uptick now. If this had come from Asia, and we would expect to see, if this was an Asian thing, you would actually expect to see the cases here on the West Coast be much higher than the ones on the East Coast because the virus, the people that are coming in from China and from Asia would actually be coming in on the West Coast side of things, not on the East Coast. So we're not actually seeing that at all. Um, that that was kind of a, a, a deal. Um, so California and Washington, and then we'll just check Oregon here. Oregon is showing, again, another port city for Asian people coming in. We're not seeing that at all. There's absolutely no upticks. And in fact, the death rate for Oregon, look at this. This is crazy. Look at how much lower the death rate for Oregon is on April, in April. So they by shutting people into their homes, you can tell that the virus does not exist in 
on the west coast like it did on the east coast. So if we look at instead this virus coming from Europe and not from the other, then we're, we're looking at is Florida. Again, we're not seeing Florida as being a port city. And look at these death statistics. They've actually gone down huge. So the amount of people expected. Um, yeah, so there's, there's, there's basically no deaths going on in there. So we, we, we're definitely not seeing that as a port city. This is Georgia. We're seeing a little bit of here. Actually, the first one getting close was November of 20, November 23rd, 2019. Um, this actually builds a case more for, um, it looks like that we had a spike here. I'm not sure if that was from a flu deaths or I'm, I'm imagining that this is actually from influenza deaths. Um, so we're really not seeing, and again, look at these death rates being so low compared to normal death rates. And let's go to, we've already done Virginia, South Carolina. And we have some upticks here. So again, we have April 11th, April 4th. April 18th, we're above, way below, above, and then now we're actually going way below the death statistics. And then, unfortunately, and I don't really think I want to see this, but for the state of New York, um, we now have our, our issue here. So, and this is actually pretty sad. Um... So this points to, unfortunately, this points to New York City as being the most likely port of entry, um, which would tell you that we actually got the biggest um, influx from Europe, not from China. And I would say, yeah. So, it doesn't mean, you know, these, I'm not going to tell you what it means. I'm going to let you guys decide what it means. Um, other, uh, Massachusetts would actually be another port city coming in for Boston. Again, you see the same upticks that you saw in New York City. So, um, the virus that's, that is, if, if this is a virus and it's not a protocol-wide deal, which obviously if they change the protocols for the entire nation, we would see the same uptick in every single state that had the virus. Um, and the reason being is that the protocols would be the same in every hospital because that's mandated by, um, by a law. So this is really showing actually more that it's a natural virus and that the natural virus actually came from Europe, or at least the one that's killing people is coming from Europe. So I would expect, um, and actually you had, here's, here's, here's an interesting deal. So this is, the, the, these are major cities, airport cities. This is Colorado. So you actually have the same uptick in Colorado that you would see that we saw in, well, actually that's only a 40% increase, 40% excess. Um, so not the same excess that we saw, but it's still a considerable um, uptick. And then what other cities, what other states do we have that are major thoroughfares? Um, Chicago, Illinois would be another one. It would be a, I clicked on the wrong thing. So Chicago would also be a major airline city. So you're actually seeing this, 
not actually cruise related, but you're actually seeing these upticks in the largest cities, not where cruises are coming in, but you're actually seeing that this is air, this is air travel. So let's look at Nebraska, which is not necessarily a main thoroughfare. Let's see, we have none, none whatsoever. We're, we're, we're well below the curve on that for Nebraska. Um, on some of these cities that don't have major thoroughfares, um, let's pick another one that we that doesn't necessarily have. Kentucky. Kentucky has a little bit of a spike there. Um, so yeah, so we're kind of seeing Maine. And as you can tell, Maine has actually nothing. So guys, this is not, this has nothing to do with cruises. This, this is, this is, has everything to do with air travel and it appears it is more air travel from Europe.